Uh, I can't believe I didn't press record. So um, let me say all that again. Hey, guys, and welcome back to I Like Watches. This is going to take a little bit of getting used to. Um, you're going to see a box up there. Look, it says Agnes B on it. Have you ever heard of Agnes B? Did you know she was a French designer? And she's worked with Seiko to produce a number of um, watches, a, a range of watches, if you like, um, with Seiko. And um, I've imported one from Japan. Here it is. Um, a little while ago, I bought some SBTR chronographs through sakurawatches.com. And um, yeah, when I was shopping for those in the basket, I threw this um, yeah Agnes B Bluetooth connectivity watch because I was curious to have a look at it. I hadn't seen them before. I wasn't even aware that this range of Seiko watches existed. And I thought it would be something a little bit different to show on the channel. So yeah, in this video, I'm going to run through all the functionality and show you this watch in a little bit of detail. It's not a tutorial. So I'm not going to show you how to do every single little thing, but I will put a link to this watch in the video description along with the manual um, so that if you end up picking up one of these, um, you know, you'll have a, a link to the manual so that you can learn how to do more well, everything it does. But yeah, it's definitely a bit different. So stick around. I'll head over to the light box and I'll show you this watch in a bit more detail. Yeah, I pressed record this time. Right, and here it is, the first Seiko Agnes B collaboration watch to feature on I Like Watches or I Like Watches 2. I was quite surprised to see a real shortage of videos on YouTube featuring these watches. Um, a lot of videos were in Japanese, so I suspect these are JDM watches. Um, but yeah, I was just surprised to see a real shortage of, um, well, videos, period. So um, I was keen to get one in to have a look at it. Um, yeah, and as you can see on the case back, no real reference to it being a Seiko, although at the bottom you can see 9D0862, which is the um, sort of referencing method that Seiko uses to show when this watch was made. 2019 in December, and it was watch 862 off the production line in that particular month. Um, a few uh, cities around the outside of the case back, um, pointing out which cities can have um, their time displayed with the watch at the press of a button and some specifications in the lower half of the case back. And um, yeah, made in China there looks. So um, this watch wasn't cased in China um, or partly made in China. It looks like it was um, completely made in China. And um, when I unboxed it, I was actually quite surprised by the weight. It will be a quartz sort of electronic Bluetooth connectivity movement inside. So I wasn't expecting there to be that much weight in the case. It is stainless steel, um, but yeah, um, I was genuinely surprised by the weight. And the strap as well um, feels like a quality strap. It's a very soft, velvety silicon strap. And when I showed this watch to my wife, it was the first thing she pointed out. She said, oh, very nice and soft. Um, and she thinks it looks good. I think it's a touch too big for her. It's a sort of unisex watch. Um, there are male and female watches available on the sakurawatches.com website. And Agnes B actually sells a couple on her dedicated website um, but this is one I would categorize as a sort of unisex watch um, it's the one that I thought looked the best there's a few different color options in this particular style but yeah if you're interested head over to the sakurawatches.com website and you'll see around 120 Agnes B watches I'm not sure if they're all made in connection or in collaboration with Seiko um, but this one certainly was. Now, I've not been able to move the hands to a convenient position because, well, it's connected to my smartphone. And um, yeah, so adjusting the hands manually is a bit of a pain. So we're just going to have to put up with the hands being wherever they are. And um, you can see at the bottom, there's a red hand and it is pointing to L. That is London. You've got P, H, T, N and L and then three dots. I think it's three dots. Yeah, it looks like three dots. And um, P is Paris. H is Hong Kong. T is Tokyo. N is New York. L is London, and if you're anywhere else in the world, it will point to the three dots showing other. And you can change the time zone very easily by just pressing the button at the four o'clock. And as you can see, the hour hand will adjust accordingly. Um, See, so I'm going to leave it on L for London. Now you can display the day and the date on this watch by pressing the button at the two o'clock. The hands will move in a very silky smooth way. The minute hand goes to 21 because today is the 21st of January. And the hour hand has gone to the last S, which means Sunday. Now I'm going to run through all of the functions that this watch has, but I'm not going to show you how to use each and every one because, well, it's actually quite straightforward. And there is a link in the video description to the manual. Um, but you basically need to download the Seiko Time Connect app. And then and once you've got the app open, you just hold down the button at the three o'clock. The watch will talk to your phone. 
and essentially um, set itself up. So um, yeah, all of the functions include time, world, time. You've got the other city function as well. So you don't just have to travel to these cities. You can travel um, to other cities and the red hand will just go to the three dots at the bottom there. You've got a battery life indicator. So when the battery is running low, the hour hand moves to the nine o'clock position and all the buttons become disabled. You've got day, date. It is a perpetual calendar, obviously. It's connecting to your smartphone and getting the date and the day off of your smartphone. So it will always show you the correct time, day and date. And you can also switch on and off the automatic reception. So you can essentially disconnect this watch from your phone and adjust everything manually. And again, all the instructions will be in the Seiko manual. So not a huge amount of functions on this watch, but enough to make it interesting. And I think it is interesting to look at as well. Um, that red hand at the bottom is certainly a little bit different. Um, so yeah, I like the case shape. I like the way the case is finished, the mix of brushed and polished finishing. Super soft silicon strap, which is very, very comfortable, although I'm not a huge fan of straps like this that just seem to collect lint. Um, but yeah, um, definitely an interesting watch. I know it's not going to be hugely popular with my audience, given it is a sort of smart watch to some degree, um, but it's a Seiko. So hopefully that's going to make it a little bit interesting. Right, let me wrap things up then with a shot of this watch on my roughly average seven and a quarter inch ish wrist. Um, yeah, it doesn't look too small for me. It's definitely on the larger size for a unisex watch. Um, yeah, I think it's Plenty big enough um, for me to wear and so suitable for men's average and I guess slightly larger than average wrists. Um, I've got a sneaky feeling I'm going to find this one wrapped around my wife's wrist later on. Despite I think it being a touch too large for her, um, yeah, she definitely has her eye on this one. So I don't know if this one's going to appear on eBay. Maybe she'll get bored of it and um, yeah, let me put it on eBay later on. But if not... That's where it's probably going to end up. Yep, pretty cool, interesting looking watch. Right, guys, let me know what you think in the comments section. Um, definitely something a little bit unusual. And I think a watch that not many people, or a range of watches, I should say, that not many people are aware of. So um, nice to bring these to your attention. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading the comments. Right, guys, thanks again for watching. Take care. Look after yourselves. You'll see me again very, very soon.